shirt, All Rise Revenge. That's right. Where, where did you get that shirt? I can't I, find I, it. I bought it like, you know, 10 years ago. It is like 10 years old. <laughs> oh my God. such a big fan of all I don't know why I mean these sentences are cool you know but all is like they have like better melody better chord structure whatsoever There's I, might, I might agree with you like not not all of the all records but all rise revenge is definitely very high up there <laughs> here's, a, here's a question like it's an early question before the interview which all singer is the best Scott uh, yeah that's right. <laughs> you, you got it. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, I, I played shows with both of them, and mm -hmm. they're both uh, with Chad and Scott, not, not with Dave. But uh, Chad is a phenomenal singer. You know, the, the thing he projects from his, uh, yeah. from, his, from his throat. And I played with him acoustics, and he always wanted to play before me. He, he said, uh, uh, let, let me go first, and you play after. And... On both shows, Bill Stevenson was there, and he said, oh, shit. Uh, "Seriously?" Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Bill, Bill came to me and he said, "Are are you playing after Chad? Ooh, that's gonna be hard, buddy." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I'm watching Chad, and like you know, once he opens his mouth, the room is silent, and everyone's like looking like that. I'm like, "Fuck!" So I, you know, I tried to play the best show I can. I played my 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 quiet songs, and I played my loud songs, mm -hmm. and and at the end of the show. Uh, Chad, Chad came up to me and he said, you were very good, buddy. Uh, great show. And, and I, th I think if Bill or someone, someone came up to me after the show and he said, you both were great. I don't think anyone was like better than the other. And I'm like, whew. <laughs> we, we want the airwaves. You know that? You don't want the airwaves, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, do you like, I mean, how important are moments to your life? Oh, wow. Well, I discovered... Uh... I discovered the Ramones greatness pretty late. I have this thing mm -hmm. where I, I know of bands. I know, of, you know, uh, I, I, I knew the Ramones like forever, of course, mm -hmm. but I really, really got into them. I think uh, a few years ago where I was like just listening to all their records, watching all the documentaries. And then uh, we were in uh, New York. Uh, what was it? Like two years ago, three years ago. Shit. We were in. <laughs> are we are we together for that long? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I we we went on this whole uh, tour of the Ramones neighborhood, and I was just blown away how think, how close that everything was. So I had like this Ramones trip, and I, and you know I, I got I bought myself a leather jacket. <laughs> I was just like tripping on Ramones, you know. Yeah. So yeah, they're very important for us. Uh, and I, I thought it was a great idea to write a song. Ishai actually wrote it. He wrote a song mm -hmm. as a kind of like a thank you to the Ramones. Because uh, it's like the Ramones have been around for 22 years and we, we passed them now, you know? Mm -hmm. We've been around for 26. That's wild. That's really but wild. But I think yeah. at the time we wrote the song, we were also tw on the 22 years uh, mm -hmm. point. So it, it kind of like everything aligned to write it like a thank, thank you, Ramones, for showing us the way that that we could keep putting out records and just keep going and going and going. And uh, sadly, at the same time, uh, Brandon from Bottle Rocket passed mm, away. Yeah, that's a bummer. So, it, it, so the whole thing kind of became a tribute to him as well mm -hmm. for being a good friend and uh, helping us out. Yeah, and talking about TBR and Ramones, so are you more into a guy, into a melodic punk guy or like a pop punk lookout record st style guy? What do you prefer? Uh, I like all of them, but uh, from Lookout, there's only like a handful of bands I, I really like. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm aware of Mr. T Experience and mm -hmm. Pansy Division and all these yeah. bands, the Crimp Shrine. Mm -hmm. But my favorite Lookout stuff is the early Green Day and Operation Ivy. Uh, that's, like my, I, I, that's like my top. The, the essentials, stuff. right? The essential stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So good. Um, but yeah, I, to, to be honest, I listen to so, so much different so many different types of music that I couldn't say that I'm like a melodic pop punk guy because or melodic hardcore because I, I don't really listen to this style unless it's uh unless some band catches my attention but unless it's a new bad religion or a new good riddance or a new mm -hmm. lag wagon that's you know been, been with me for the past many many years so I'm always interested to see what these guys are doing but like 
kind of like new bands that come out and play this style of music, I, I'd want to hear something different because this style yeah. of music has already been done, you know? Yeah, talking about melodic hardcore, do you listen to yeah. bands like Four Years Strong or like no. Neck Deep? No, not at all. <laughs> What do you think about them? I was like, they're so big. I mean, in Indonesia, I play in a band like, you know, we're in this band of like Screeching Weasel and the Queers, my band. Yeah, we're, that's we're, good. We can we cannot be big for that. We've been playing for like 12 years, but you know, wow. big bands always be like active, you know, Joyce and you know, that kind of thing. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what the thing is. Uh, you you play you play music and you do music because you love it. That's that's, that's the right. first thing. That's cool. You don't you don't play to get big. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I I've seen everything already. I've mm -hmm. seen and I've also been in Useless ID at a point where I wouldn't say we were trying to get big, but we were kind of like right at that point where you know we looked a certain way and we played a certain uh, like a certain style and we made a great album and i was like wondering i wonder how 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 far this this album can get mm -hmm. but it it doesn't uh, you're not in charge of it at the end of the day the crowd is so i don't know i don't think billy eilish knew that you would be huge she was just <laughs> making music with her brother in, in the room and then whatever happens happens so yeah so Pretty much like the bands that you consider big bands, I think it's out of our reach to know. You mm. just keep making music because you love it, and once you you stop liking what you're doing, or so it's time to do something else. It's just, yeah. It's cool. I got a word of wisdom from Yotam Ben Horen from mm. Useless ID. That's cool. Yeah. I will remember this moment forever in my life. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> you know, I'm doing. You know, I'm doing songwriting lessons. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I have a group of people now. Uh, it's like five or six people. Mm -hmm. that, uh, I teach them. Uh, I teach them songwriting. In and Israel? Do... No, it's online in Zoom. Ah, online. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. So it's. Uh, I have a group of six people. This is the group for now. We already did like almost four or five lessons. Mm -hmm. So it's a ten lesson course that I teach like all these aspects of songwriting, and I talk about like you know, many many things, and I give them assignments. So mm -hmm. once that group is over, I'm going to open another group. So if you're interested, hit me up. <laughs> oh, that's a really soft marketing spot right there. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, it is. I got I to get by these days, dude. You, of course, you've met Fat, Fat Mike for uh, many times, right? How is yeah. he in real life? I'm wondering. Interesting. He's a wild card. You never know. Mm. If you think you know what he's going to say or which song he's going to like or what mm. he's going to do, it's always something. It's not even the opposite. It's always something like out there. It's like, what? And then you see some of that. <laughs> then you see some of that kind of succeeds for him. Mm -hmm. and you're like, how? <laughs> so he, he's like that. I don't know. He's a special person. He, he sees the world in a very different way. He's kind of like, a, I don't know. I, I, he, you could say he's like a healer. For people healer. that, uh, but in a way, uh, he's a healer for people that like getting beaten up but are ashamed of it. Or like, you know, the BDSM. <laughs> yeah, some yeah. people are, are ashamed of BDSM or some people are ashamed of wearing dresses. I mean, yeah, I've, yeah, worn, yeah. I've worn dresses in my life. I'm not ashamed of it. I don't have, <laughs> it's, not, it's not my thing, yeah, yeah. but I don't have a problem doing that or mm -hmm. wearing high heels, which I fall flat on my face. Mm -hmm. It's not my thing, but I did it around Fat Mike and I'm like, yeah, this is fine. So, so he, he told me that, you know, some people are very ashamed of it. So they, they have to like come out of the closet. So oh. <laughs> I, think, I, think he's, I think he's doing a great job in his, uh, in the way he's doing that. Mm -hmm. So good on, good on him. Talking about Fat Mike, you opened No FX where they recorded the backstage passport, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me the story? Like who, who actually spat on Fat Mike on that show? Oh, that was in Jerusalem. Uh, ah, you didn't play there? What? You didn't play no, we, there? No, we did. We did play there. They got really pissed mm -hmm. off because, I mean, yeah, that's the thing with Israeli punks. They, they got the idea of punk, you know, of punk rock through, like, UK punk. Like, ma many, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. many Israelis. You, they, they got the punk rock from the UK because mm -hmm. uh, many of them are from, like, Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. But mm -hmm. us being from Haifa, we got, we got the punk from, from the U.S., so it's like oh, the U.S. Oh. and the U.K. in a way. <laughs> so there's a so, difference like that in Israel. Yeah, so they, they, they grew up listening to like Cox Bear and uh, mm -hmm. Sex Pistols and 
GBH and all these bands that it's like cool to spit on the band that's playing. <laughs> oh, it's man. like, oh, someone's playing. We like them. Let's spit on their faces. So I don't think, I, don't, I didn't think it was nice to do that to no effect. So they did that. And then uh, Limo, the, security, think, yeah, the guy in the stage, yeah, the right? security, the guitar tech, mm-hmm. so he jumped into the crowd and he tried to push one of them away. He's like, stop, stop doing it. So they jumped on Limo and then Limo started fighting with them, of course. So they got that footage. But by the way, the next day, the day after that, and Fat Mike always reminds me to tell this story to people. Uh, Paula, do you know this story? Okay, so I, I will say to him, and listen, you'll be very disgusted. <laughs> okay. So the following day, we had a show in Tel Aviv in front of a thousand people mm-hmm. with no effect. And when, you, when Useless ID played, at some point I stopped the show. I said, okay, listen, guys, you gave no effects a very bad time yesterday by spinning on them. So if anyone has any spit in their mouth that they want to let out, now's the time. I'm going to count till three, and you all spit on me. And don't spit on no effects. <laughs> it's on the video, I can tell you. So then a snowstorm of spit. And then, you know, I'm saying, okay, stop. And I say stop, and something goes in my mouth. I'm like, oh, oh no, okay, get off. <laughs> and then, and then oh, I, get off, I, I get off stage, and Fat Mike, is, uh, he's like, wow, uh, you really took one for the team, huh? disgusting but i took many showers since oh that was nasty as fuck you know what i think i think in a way that's why uh he uh he uh signed useless id at the end he's like you did that for me all right i'll sign your band (laughs) really (laughs) maybe i don't know so but you actually knew the person who spat on him uh i i'm guessing i did because mm-hmm. Israel was a small scene, so, and, I, and when I left the show, I, I saw this, this punk I knew sitting on mm-hmm. the sidewalk, uh, like, you know, like, kind of like with a bruised face, and he's like, mm-hmm. you know, fuck no effects. So I'm like, hey, I think it was you. <laughs> and I'm like, uh-huh. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. Have a great day. Please stay you in too. touch. Stay safe. Of course. Stay safe. <laughs> Cheers. Bye.